when we work internationally. And you'll hear it now in, in the United States as we confront a, a set of issues about um, uh, the future of the country and the role that we must play in, 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 in helping children be more successful. And you hear people say it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it takes Team MSU to be sure that anyone who comes here as a student leaves here as a citizen scholar that they envision that society needs for a brighter future. And that that village, that Team MSU, is represented by the neighborhoods. Michigan State it has an enormous advantage with uh, the, the fact that we're large and admit 7,000 plus freshmen a year from all over the globe, from all over the country. And it gives students an opportunity to feel that they're part of a global community. What the neighborhoods will do is to take that at a macro level and move it to, the, to a micro level. Because it's not simply that we have people from a variety of places. It's that people from a variety of places interact with one another and get to know and learn about one another and their cultures and their traditions. So once you have that sort of conception of neighborhood, then you think about what should be in the neighborhood. And obviously it has to be a place to, to sleep and a place that has extraordinary food because food is a part of, of neighborhoods. Uh, when you think about living uh, in a place and you, and you choose a neighborhood that's walkable and engaged, you want to have really nifty places to eat and an opportunity to use food and coffee and tea to, to be a part of that uh, engagement. And so food is a part of it, but also health services have to be a part because we also know that, that, that a healthy body uh, makes uh, for someone who's a better student. And so that's part of it. Academic support is there. But the other idea about the neighborhood was when you come to a neighborhood, everyone is part of the neighborhood. You're not part of a special program in the neighborhood. You're simply part of the neighborhood. So the services that are available to students are there no matter what their major or no matter what program they might be in uh, that would include activities beyond the neighborhood, whether you're a student athlete or a band member or you're part of a set of programs and activities that we identified uh, during your admissions process. You're still a neighborhood resident and you have an opportunity to learn and grow as a neighborhood resident. If you look at the data, there's a, a dichotomy. One, they really appreciate the bigness of Michigan State and all the opportunities that that provides. And also, they appreciate the small town feel, the sense of community that they have within Michigan State, a sense of belonging. And I think that comes out of a, a long history of the way in which a freshman have experienced uh, the university through the residence hall system. So the question uh, that uh, the question arose about how can we make that better? How do we take what is really an extraordinary advantage of Michigan State and make it better and have it work better for 21st century students? So the neighborhood is a is a is a sort of the umbrella concept for the question of how do we increase the social, emotional, and intellectual engagement of our students in a way that they can meet their goals. And we believe that we're producing a, a graduate that can meet the challenges for the 21st century. So that caused us to look at everything we were doing, particularly for new students coming to Michigan State. And how could we, in the sort of the current environment where urban is in, and our students are telling us that they really are attracted to urban environments. Those are big, they have lots of resources, but they also want the enclave where they live to be vital, to have services that they need, and to have a sense of belonging that's beyond what they might do to text uh, their friend across the country or their friend in another city, but there are people that they actually talk to and engage with in a very meaningful way and feel comfortable doing that when their confidence level is not very high. 
And th that's this enclave that, uh, that students def describe as one of the neat things about urban living when they leave Michigan State is really the residence halls when you, and when you think about it and the geographic area represented by the residence halls. So it became pretty simple then to say, how can we turn the residence halls into a neighborhood? Not simply a place to sleep and eat, or occasionally meet with a faculty member because there's an office, but a genuine sense of what a neighborhood is and should be uh, to support the students who live there and to make them feel a part of the MSU community. So I can conceptualize why, uh, conceptualize why a neighborhood concept would permit us to better move graduation rates, deal with some of the issues that we were seeing uh, not simply at Michigan State, but all around the country uh, as it related to this generation of students and how we could better meet their needs uh, when they were in times of difficulty, as all 18 to 22 year olds are at some point in time. And what's happened is this, this pilot in Hubbard was very undefined at the beginning. And I know the students were extraordinarily skeptical because we couldn't say what it would be or what would happen specifically. And in fact, they've helped, the students along with the staff have created uh, what now can be seen in Hubbard Hall as the pilot neighborhood. It has elements there that we imagined at the beginning, you know, mass support, writing support, a nurse, food. But it has, an all, it has evolved a set of programs and activities and connections to the residents that one could not have imagined at the beginning. And I think that's really the value of the neighborhood concept. It's always gonna be dynamic because the people who live there will have a strong voice in how it evolves. Taking this set of assets, this set of services, and shaping them in ways that best meet their needs. But they'll still have this sense that you can come back to the neighborhood, like going back home. Conceived of a residence hall system uh, that would have classrooms and space in it to do for faculty and students, for students to do work, for residential colleges. What we've done is really build on that tradition. And we're very fortunate that we have great people at Michigan State who believe that we have a, an obligation to be at the cutting edge, the innovative edge of services for students. And we're also very blessed at Michigan State to have people who are prepared to work outside of their formal organizational lines in order to make this happen. Because the neighborhoods are a partnership across uh, residential and hospitality services, obviously, because that's part of, of the base of the program. But it's not simply a facilities base, it's an intellectual partner along with student affairs and services and uh, provosts, uh, the college's academic affairs. So this is a joint creation of the campus. It just isn't programs put in a place and owned by people uh, like individual businesses. This is really a coordinated, integrated program and that's gonna be the power of the neighborhoods. So you have this sort of sense of what you would have in a community that you can go and look at this the door with the services and have a label on it and somebody will be responsible for assuring the services are delivered properly. But it's not about just a door and a service. It's about an integrated approach across all of these aspects of the university to make Michigan State a more exciting place for students.